with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If it calls them gods, to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I do perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest Jesus, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John the first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Talk, but sometimes I can't sing, so I can throw everybody off. <laughs> the action of uh, St. Stanislaus, whose feast we commemorate today, is interesting because he was martyred, uh, 1070, something like that. And um, he was martyred because he called the shots. He told the then king of that area of the world, he's a patron of Poland now, um, what he was doing wrong. He reproved the king, and eventually um, he was martyred by that, by that king. Uh, he also made a name for himself by being someone who loved the poor, who really cares for the poor, and who did things for the poor. Perfect. So now we have Jesus, St. Stanley's uh, role model and our role model. And Jesus is in confrontation with people of the establishment who don't like what he's doing. They just don't like it. Because he uses that phrase, as we mentioned before, in John's Gospel, whenever you hear the phrase, I am, from the mouth of Jesus, it's putting him in connection with God, Amy, Amy, I am who I am, from, from the book of Exodus, uh, from the relationship of God and Moses revealing himself. And when the Jews hear him call himself the Son of God, they say, ah, ah, you can't do that. You know? And even the good works he's doing are not enough to convince them, his, his audience, that what he's doing is God's work. So in his words and in his actions, he's reflecting who he is, the Son of God. And let me change it. A son or a daughter of God. And of course, Jesus refers to that in, in the Psalms when, when he, he says to the Jews, you know, you, you've used that word before. You are sons and daughters of God. So, am I wrong by saying son of God? Well, yeah, but you're making yourself God equal with God. Well, judge my works. Do the works I do show you that I am a son, a child of God? And I, I, that's not John, that's me. We need to hear that. We need to hear it in reference to ourselves. Are we people who come to church, pray, leave here, and reflect in our prayer life, the actions outside, that we are a son or daughter of God? And if you are, get ready to be stoned. If you are, get ready to be criticized. If you are, get ready to be ignored. And you're right in line with Jesus, and in this case, St. Stanislaus. And we remember Father Stanley, a uh, former pastor, and of course it was named Stanley, named after Stanislaus, patron of Poland. Those who do God's will are meant to change the face of the earth. When Jesus came to us, that was his mission. 
to reveal God to us, to reveal a greater appreciation of life. And he goes to the depths of his, of his world, and he goes to the poorest, and he goes to the lepers, and he goes to the prostitutes, and he goes to those who are on, on the outskirts of civilization, and he spends time with them. He raises them. And what is he doing? He's hopefully getting us to relook at the world around us, to re-examine through his eyes, the eyes of faith in our case, what the world is all about, and that we are meant to bring Christ's love, God the Father's presence, into the world. Our first reading from Jeremiah is very uh, appropriate. Jeremiah was a warning prophet. He was a prophet of gloom and doom, but he was doing God's work. And people talked about it. The phrase, denounce, let us denounce it. All who were doing, who watching him doing his good works, wanted to denounce him because he was doing things that made them look at themselves. He was doing actions of love and caring that made them look at themselves and reevaluate themselves, and they didn't want to do that. They wanted to keep it their way. Put God in his place, someplace in the temple, and we're going to continue our lives. Jesus makes that very clear. We can't do that. Jesus makes it very clear. We can't live in the world without God. And we can't live in the world as if God doesn't exist. Those of us who know Jesus knows he puts a burden on us. In, 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 the, in the Exultet, the song for the Easter vigil in front of the candle, the Easter candle, the deacon or celebrant, whoever's singing the Exultet, is one phrase, sings, O necessary sin, about that. I don't know if you ever caught that. It comes to Easter Vigil. Oh, necessary sin. Since when is sin necessary? Because through the necessary sin of the cross, we have gained the Redeemer. And that's what it's a reference to. So, Christ's life gives us a new way of looking at things that don't go our way. A new way of looking at the poor, at those who need us, at our own family members. A new, if we, if we observe him, a new way of looking at them through his eyes, the eyes of compassion, the eyes of forgiveness, the eyes of love. And don't look for a reward. Crucifixion was his reward. But eternal life was the Father's comment on Jesus' life. He refused to allow Jesus, his son, to stay dead. And because of that, the resurrection of Jesus, he's with us right now. He reads our hearts. He knows who you, who you forgive and who you refuse to forgive. He knows our greed. He knows our generosity. Oh, you can pray all you want. But if the prayers of our church and our faith don't reflect our way in the world, they're empty. References to that in the Old Testament, there's one of the prophets who, quote, writing on behalf of God, said, all of your sacrifices, because they used to bring the, the cows and the bullocks to, to the temple and cut them up and offer them in sacrifice to God, all your sacrifices come to, to heaven and they stink up my nostrils. They stink because they're not reflecting your lives. This is not Jesus saying it, it's Louis Scurdy saying it. If we pray without putting our prayers into action, they stink. I don't know if every theologian would agree with that, but basically you understand what I'm saying. They've got to be balanced, modeled on Jesus. He was criticized for who he was and what he was doing, and we should be too. Be criticized for being a Christian, for doing good, loving and putting our prayers, our words of prayer into 